question this week comes in from Nate. It's about increasing FTP. Nate says, I'm 44 years old and got into cycling about five years ago. In just two years, I made huge gains, increasing my FTP from just over 200 watts to over 300 watts. I've since maintained an FTP between 320 and 330, but feel stuck here. I'm a little over 200 pounds and six foot three. I'm built more like a complete athlete than a typical cyclist. So getting under 200 pounds is very challenging for me, which puts me around three and a half watts per kilo. My goal has been to reach four watts per kilo for a while now, but I have not achieved it. I've followed several trainer road plans, and last year I focused on sweet spot training based on some reading that I did, but I still haven't seen any major increases. When I think about weightlifting, the goal is to increase weights to push your muscles beyond their comfort zone. I've been considering incorporating over-unders, some 3-5 to five minute efforts at 105% of FTP, along with some 30-30s to help push my FTP up. However, when I read about it, I keep seeing suggestions for sweet spot and threshold workouts, but those haven't helped me achieve a higher FTP. My main goal this winter is to cre- increase my FTP, and my big, hairy, audacious goal is to reach 400 watts. Currently, I can train between 6 to 8 hours regularly, but I'm trying to increase that to 10. I do about 4 gravel races a year, all between 50 to 80 miles with an elevation gain over 100 feet per mile. I know those races are not ideal for my weight, but they are the ones that are available in my area near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm excited for your feedback. Thanks, Nate. All right. Well, I don't know, Nate, do you want the like the honest truth answer that you don't want to hear, or do you want some like mumbo jumbo that like uh, Trainer Road would probably give you? Let's let's we could start with some hard truth, but then also talk about like some things that Nate should try here, you know, to get out of his rut. Uh, well, the honest truth answer that you probably don't want to hear is that you need to be riding more. <laughs> what, like what he say his volume was six to eight hours, six to eight hours. And he's hoping to increase that to 10 hours. Yeah. I mean, when, when you hit a plateau like that, um, I think I think people think that there's some something magic that they can do with their intervals to try to get out of that rut. But you need and I'm not saying like you can't adjust your intervals a little bit to but if you you know if if you're doing sweet spot intervals now and or sweet spot and threshold intervals now to try to raise your FTP and it's not really doing it. And then you try to do 30 thirties and VO two, like I don't know, that might get you a little bit, but like you're never gonna, you're never gonna like you, for example, like if your super lofty goal is 400 Watts, you will never get to 400 Watts doing less than 10 hours. A week. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. Like there's probably some genetic freaks out there that can get to 400 Watts on that. But given, given the information that you've given us, I don't, I don't think you're one of those people. Uh, like your volume just needs to be higher than it currently is right now. To get to that, to get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in 400 Watts, I mean, he says that is a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, and I would agree with that. I mean, to go, you know, it's one thing he went from 200 to 300 watts early on in training, but the earlier you are into training, the more low hanging fruit there is to gain from just any yeah. kind of structured training. So that's not surprising to see a hundred watt increase uh, in in that first two years, but to see mm-hmm. another hundred watts, you know, that second hundred watts takes years. You know, you're talking yeah. many, many hours, many, many years. Um, exponentially harder than the first hundred watts. exactly <laughs> what yeah you you definitely it's it you can't just keep doing the same thing for five years and hope to get there you know mm-hmm. for for sure i mean he talks about you know switching up the um you know switching up the structure switching up the uh the the training to try and overstimulate the muscles or you know you're it really you're talking about your you know cardiovascular system here um but that's not even enough. Like Dylan, you know, what you're exactly what you're talking about. Like you need to overload your system mm-hmm. with more training is really what it comes down to, to, to see that kind of an increase. Now he talks about getting to four Watts per kilo. 
which for him, I just did a quick calculation, would be around 360 watts. So if he's at 330 right now, as what he's, you know, he says 320 to 330. So he's seen 330 at some points. We'll call that kind of the maximum of what he's achieved. You know, now we're only talking another 30 watts, which is 10%, still a lot. And you're still going to need to do something, you know, change something in your training to get there. But that seems more attainable without like going crazy off the charts with volume. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, 400 watts. I mean, that's that might be a stretch with given the constraints that you're working with, it, you know, even 10 hours a week. Yeah. I think the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, changing the type of intensity you're doing or like going <clears> from, <throat> I don't know, 30 30s to 40 20s or going from, you know, uh, I'm doing threshold intervals now. Now I want to try VO2 or, or, yeah, or like I'm doing regular threshold, but now I'm going to try over unders. Um, I don't want to call that a marginal gain because I think perhaps it's a little bit more than marginal, but you're, that's not, that's not going to get you 30 Watts. Yeah. The way I look at that, you know, switching up the intensity structure, um, switching up the energy systems that we're working I see that more as um, either one, you're you're just trying to change the stimulation to keep things fresh and keep your body making adaptations so you don't get the training doesn't get stale. Um, you know that's one way to look at it. But also, you know, really for a lot of athletes, it's just talking about specificity. You know what what are we trying to train here so that you're most equipped for the type of efforts that are going to be demanded in a race. And that's where we might focus on some of those different areas and change up your intervals specifically around what's expected in a race. Um, but it's probably not going to change your threshold a whole lot. But well, it, what it will change is your things like, you know, repeatability, um, you know, at, at certain intensities or, um, you know, like, you know, how much muscular fatigue you can you can withstand, you know, before uh, body starts to give out. Um, you know, so it kind of depends on what the demands of the races are. And that's really what we're targeting. But we're not. We're not changing up necessarily expecting big increases in FTP. That that does come from more just aerobic conditioning. Mm -hmm. And even yourself, you know, so uh, looking at, you know, anecdotally for you, like you've had to do things, change your training in the last few years in order to see some of the improvements that you have. And you have seen improvements, you know, like you, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people could think, you know, you were at an elite level three or four years ago and you're at your peak, but We've seen improvements, you know, in your training and in your, uh, you know, overall fitness profile, but you've had to change things in your training. And a lot of that has actually probably come from some increased volume at times too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And I, I get why, I mean, I get why people are looking to cert, you know, try to try to find a different route other than increasing their volume it's because increasing your volume is hard if you've already got a packed schedule in your life like you got other stuff to do you, you're not a pro cyclist you can't ride 30 hours a week yep um but it's yeah i mean there's there there comes a point like we if you have all the time in the world to train then we can actually have a conversation about what the optimal volume is for you like is it 15? Is it 20? Is it 25? You know, we can talk about that and it probably changes over time uh, or over the course of a season. But if you're honestly, like if you're anywhere below 10 hours a week, uh, I think the conversation should be more geared towards how do we increase that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's certainly, you know, everyone wants to get the the most bang for the buck, right? Like if you've only got eight hours to train, Let's see what we can do with those eight hours to get the most out of you. But what mm -hmm. we're saying here is that the most out of you is probably not going to come close to reaching your full potential. Um, and certainly you can't expect to have super, I mean, I'm not saying that Nate shouldn't be striving for something big, hairy, audacious like this. Um, I think it's okay to like wish and, and hope and, and, you know, try and set your eyes on something. Um, but there also needs to be realistic expectations. And I, and I personally, you know, in this case here, I think the four watt per kilo mark is a much more realistic expectation and goal to work towards than that 400 watts. And the only reason I say that is a lot of times in training, 
you can really get yourself down in the dumps if you're not hitting those markers that you're looking for. You know, so if you set your sights on 400 watts and you only get to 365, but you forget about the fact that you at one day were hoping to just get to four watts per kilo. Well, you did that, but you still missed the mark of 400 watts by a you know, sizable amount. But that's probably just because that goal was maybe a little too unrealistic. Um, again, we don't know, you know the specifics of Nate's training. Um, certainly sounds like he's in a rut. And a lot of that could just be from extended amounts of sweet spot training, you know, never really overstimulating, uh, you know, some of those higher energy systems. But, um, you know, yeah, again, to, to, to think that it's 70 watts understimulated would be yeah, probably not. Yeah. I, I, so I, I'll be honest, I haven't taken a look at the trainer road plans since I made my video about trainer road, which was like three years ago at this point, or two <laughs> years. I don't know how long ago it was. It was a while ago, but, uh, I guess it depends on what you mean by I've done a number of sweet spot plans. Cause I, I think a plan that's got a lot of zone two in it, but the intensity that you're doing is sweet spot. I don't necessarily see a problem with that, especially if you're training for say like unbound or you're in your base season. I think that's actually how I train for unbound or how I train in the base season. Like I'm doing mostly zone two, like over 80% zone two, but the intensity that I'm doing when I do intensity is sweet spot tempo, whatever. Uh, my major problem with the trainer road plans was that they were prescribing sweet spot every single day or like, you know, four to five times a week. It was just way too much. And if that is the case, if you're doing, if you're trying to quote, I like, I, I see people, you know, suggest this all the time. Um, if you're trying, trying to quote, maximize the time you have by doing sweet spot every time you get on the bike, that's like, that's a huge rookie mistake. And honestly, it's quite embarrassing that uh, trainer road made that mistake, considering that they're not rookies. They're like, you know, make professional their, their job is to make training plans. Um, anyway, uh, not to go down a rabbit hole on trainer road, but this guy just mentioned that he's using the trainer road plans. If that is the case where you're getting on the bike every single time and doing some sort of sweet spot workout, I would stop doing that because there, there is a, there is the potential here that if you are doing that, um, maybe you're seeing a plateau because you're actually living in a state of fatigue. Like you're never giving your body a chance to recover. And, you know, uh, you're, and so, sometimes when people are living in a state of fatigue, they don't even, they don't even remember what it feels like to be fresh. They just, they're just become used to fatigue and they stagnate at wherever, uh, like this guy's stagnating at 320 to 330. And it, and it honestly might be the case that if he just gave himself some solid rest, he'd have another 10 to 15 Watts right there. Like without, yeah. without training, like right. just give himself rest and he's got 10 to 15 Watts. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I was trying to quick look up and see if I could find any specific trainer road plans, but he, he does it like, there's so many different options. It's really hard to know exactly what configuration he was using. Sure. Um, but it just sounds like he's, he said he, you know, focus on sweet spot training based on some reading he did. And then again, later on, it says, you know, he's considering doing higher intensity training, but whenever he reads up on it, he keeps seeing suggestions for sweet spot and threshold workouts. And I think probably what he's, what he's, you know, reading here and falling into is, uh, articles that are talking about time crunched athletes, you know, so, cause, cause here, I mean, you know, if you're under 10 hours, you know, I'd, I'd consider you to fall into the time crunched athlete category. And there's a lot of articles out there about, you know, you want to maximize the five hours you have on training, do sweet spot for four of those hours. It's like, um, but just because you're only training for four or five hours a week, doesn't mean you can't fall into a state of overtraining, you know, quote, quote unquote, overtraining where your body's just getting overstimulated. You know, I wish, I wish that those articles, and I'll be honest, I've been guilty of this too. I've made videos about how to train on six hours a week. And I try to work within the six hour per, per week parameter, but 
I almost wish that those articles would be like, uh, you know, when they're talking about, okay, how to, how to train if you're time crunched. I wish that they would emphasize and encourage people to find more time in their schedule to increase their volume instead of like, I, I get that there, there are legitimately people in this world that only have five hours a week and they cannot find one single hour more than that. That's it. They can't, they can't, they, they are absolutely booked with their schedule. Five hours is the most that they have. They live a crazy life. Um, but I, I think, I think that if if coaches were being honest if if you could encourage people to try to find more time in their schedule and like like i said it could be with two a days like some people if they can't do more than an hour at one time during the week could could fit in another hour in the afternoon if they ride in the morning like i almost feel like encouraging people to try to find more time in their schedule to try to bump their volume up higher as opposed to trying to work with what they got would be a better solution. Yeah. And, um, you know, understanding that more training always seems easier on paper. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of times people can come up with that extra hour or two on paper, but when it comes down to it, it's like, it's so easy to just waste 30 minutes because you're like stuck on Instagram or stuck, you know, checking emails or, you know, you're contemplating about which route to do for your ride. And it's so easy to like lose that extra hour or two. Like I would, I would bet that most people probably do have that extra time available, even allotted into their training. And it just gets eaten up by doing mundane tasks that aren't contributing to their training at all. You know, it's so like mm -hmm. a lot of it is just being more efficient with your time. It may not even be carving out more time, but it's using every bit of that time that you have available uh, in trying to contribute that towards training. And sometimes that looks like doing, you know, workouts on the trainer, even though the weather's nice out because you just know it's lower barrier to entry to hop on that trainer and you can be ready to go in three minutes versus like, you know, sometimes, you know, you go out to the garage to get, you know, start your ride and your tires are low and your chains, you know, not waxed or lubed. And you got to like fiddle with your bike for 15, 20 minutes. Before you know it, that two hour ride window just turned into an hour and 20 minutes. And there's 40 minutes right there. You know, so like yeah. I see that happen a lot. And, and I fall victim to that too. Um, you know, the, it seems like for me, the, the more structured I can get with like, you know, putting it in my calendar and saying like, this is my time to train. And I look at it and this is my two hour window. Well, I can't, I, for 100%, I cannot, if I have two hours between meetings, let's say, I know I can't train for two hours that day. So I need to be realistic, first of all, with what is that time, two hour time frame going to yield? And then it's sort of like a game, like, okay, if I've got two hours, 15 minutes allotted for like, you know, post ride, shower, meal, get ready for my next meeting. Okay, so now that's an hour and 45 minutes. What's the minimum amount of time that I can spend getting ready for that ride so that I can maximize the time that I have on the bike? And some days it turns into an hour because I'm just like, I waste that first 40 minutes just doing stuff that doesn't matter. And then before I know it, I've got an hour workout left. But if I'm, if I'm really on my game and I like focus on it and, and I plan ahead, I can make that two hour window into an hour and 40 minute quality session. And, and that's, you know, that's really trying to maximize the time. And that's what, you know, I think, I think getting more structured with like actually planning in your time for for your workouts and planning ahead and setting out your clothes ahead of time setting out your nutrition ahead of time doing whatever you can to like make it so that the barrier to entry to get that workout started because it, it it always like just like with anything that's challenging it it's always like the first step is always the hardest so it's like you just got to get out that door the sooner you can get out that door once you're on that bike you're going to forget about all the work stuff you're going to forget about all the you know, the life stress, and you're just going to go do the workout. But getting out the door is the hardest part. So the easier you can make getting out the door, the more time you're going to allot for yourself to, to get that workout in. And, and I really think a lot of people could find that extra 30 minutes a day if they were just a little bit more prepared like that, a little more intentional about like carving out that time. And it's probably not, again, it's probably not, you're not just like buying yourself more time. The time is probably there. It's just how are you utilizing it? Yeah, agreed. 
I don't know if we answered this guy's question. Yeah, at so all. let's let's just quick, you know, before we move on, you know, if Nate's let's just assume Nate, you know, he's not going to increase his volume and he's stuck in the sweet spot rut, um, and you know, is it is it sort of in you know it's off season time right now? He's you know he talks about over the next few months his goal is to try and increase his FTP as much as possible. Um, what what are some things you would maybe suggest he tries to switch up his training to? stimulate some different energy systems and maybe get a little bit of fitness bump and get them out of this sweet spot rut. Um, yeah. So the thing is the, the time of the year that it is right now is not really, I mean, I don't know. He could try to do sort of a reverse periodization. I think that if you're, if you're seeing a plateau, with a certain intensity, you should change it up and you should try something different. Because if you just keep doing the same thing, you're not, you're going to just continue to live in a plateau. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and I almost, I, I, I almost he, you know, he's talking about, oh, well, I'm trying, I'm thinking about 30 thirties or this or that or whatever. I, I almost, if you've just got the generic goal of, you know, generally raising your fitness, almost don't even think that it matters what the specific intervals you're doing are, but you should change it. If you've, if you're hitting a plateau, like you should change what you're doing. Yeah. And when you say change it, you mean change your focus of what you're targeting for the next block. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about every single workout changing and doing different, you know, right. style of workouts. You're talking about if yeah. you, if you're, if you're plateaued at sweet spot, move into VO2 max block or move into some, you know, anaerobic work, but, but still stay structured with that. And don't just, you know, throw spaghetti at the wall. Like you, you still have yeah. to have some intentionality behind what you're focusing on. Um, you know, and generally I would say, you know, tempo and threshold, maybe you can extend those blocks out to like, you know, 12 weeks, you know, where you start, start to see that plateau, but if you're talking about like a VO2 max block or an anaerobic block, I mean, you probably only need to do one four week block of that and, and you're going to, you know, see some increase or see some change. Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you know, for sure, you're probably up at, you know, up against the volume limit versus the training stimulus limit. Yeah. Again, though, I, so if I, if I had to like make a rough estimate here, it, let's say you're doing a bunch of sweet spot now. That's like all you do. And then you switch to VO two max and 30 thirties. Uh, that will probably bump your FTP. If that's your goal, that will probably bump your FTP up five to 10 Watts. And then you will hit another plateau and yep. then you'll, you'll be plateaued at three thirty to three forty. Like you, what you will not hit, you will not hit three sixty by just switching it to, to 30 thirties. That's yep. not going to happen. Yeah, the the only thing I would say, well, it says he's in the, he, he's been training for five years. I mean, five years is probably long enough that you know you are starting to get that pretty solid base. You know, like maybe mm -hmm. five years from now. I mean, generally, I say you know until you have eight to ten years under your belt, like you're still going to benefit from contributing to your overall aerobic capacity. Um, it's just going to take a long time to get there. You know, it's so like you, you might, if you stay in the same track you are on right now, you know, maybe you get to that four Watts per kilo, uh, you know, metric or, you know, um, goal. But, um, again, yeah, unless you're really increasing the volume, something very audacious might be out of the, you know, out of the cards, or at least just a little bit out of reach. Um, you know, so he doesn't, he doesn't say his age, does he? 44. 44. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, here's another thing to consider is that at 44 years old, your um, people hit their peak for endurance sports around late twenties to early thirties. And then after early thirties, the, the slope is the slope down is pretty gradual. Uh, but it gets steeper and steeper and steeper as you get older. And so at 44 years old, um, 
you're kind of, I mean, I, I, I hate to say this, but you're kind of fighting time here. You know what I mean? So if you're, if you have a goal of hitting any number, uh, like that's like a lifetime goal for you of being at four Watts per kilo, or let's say like being at 400 Watts, you're, you actually are, if, if that is a goal for you, you are kind of fighting time here because it will, it will actually only get more difficult to do that as you get older. Yeah. You know, what, what I, what I, what I look at in this equation is not just their age, but also what is their training age? You know, so like, uh, Nate's training age is only five years. Like he still has room to improve as an aerobic athlete, you know? So like, yes, he's 44 and yes, he's on like the, you know, downward trend as far as what his potential is. But when I, when I think about it, it's like, you know, his potential is just like, instead of being at three, 300 Watts right now, if he was in his late twenties, he'd probably be at three fifty, Right. So like, it just means like what that baseline is, is, is lower now, um, mm-hmm. you know, or what the potential is, is the potential ceiling is lower, but it still doesn't mean like, he's not going to necessarily get worse with time. He can still improve because his training age is young enough. Now, if Nate said he's got 25 years of training under his belt, yeah, there that that's a, yeah. actually a trickier equation. Um, you know, so right. we're not trying to say Nate discourage you and say like there's no room for improvement. It's just like to overcome that potential ceiling that is you know slowly decreasing over time. Um, you probably do have to fight against that by things like changing up the stimulus and trying to you know throw in some increases in volume at times. And even something like like what I was going to recommend is. Um, maybe you can carve out like a, an actual training camp or, uh, you know, a high volume block week or something like that, you know, where you could go somewhere or you could take the time off of work and stay home or whatever it is. And like, get that 15 hour weekend, get that 18 hour weekend where you're like really getting to overload the system, something like that. You might see a more sizable bump from, um, you know, maybe you can do that like every you know, six months. And then that's a way for you to like really overload the system with volume without having to over, or, you know, being able to increase your volume too much on a day-to-day basis. Um, it takes some, again, some, some structure, some sacrifice some intentionality to make that work. Um, and you certainly don't want to overdo it. You don't want to go and do 30 hours. You know, you don't want to triple what your volume is, but, um, you could probably double your volume, you know, with, with a training camp and, and get away with it pretty, pretty handily, as long as you don't have all the rest of life stress is going on. Um, you know, so that could be another option too, that, you know, maybe you think about over the winter time or something is getting something like a training camp in. Yeah. Uh, okay, sweet. Well, let's, uh, let's touch on this last one real quick. Um, this is from John from the U S uh, John says, what are your thoughts on high intensity work during the off season in base season, especially for older athletes? By high intensity, I mean higher than threshold, such as sprint work or VO2 max efforts. What I understand is adaptations from these efforts come on very quickly and training this intensity for too long can lead to burnout. At the same time, older athletes rapidly lose VO2 max as they age. So would it make sense to stimulate it more often as opposed to going months of the year, considering off-season base without training that energy system? Thanks, John. Yeah, so uh i actually did a video on this there's there's some there was a study i think where they had subjects do no intensity through their off season and then they had subjects do what they called maintenance intensity through their off season and i think maintenance intensity if i remember correctly was just like an interval session either once a week or once every two weeks like it wasn't that frequent like less frequent than most people do intervals by a long shot. Yeah. Um, and they showed that those who did maintenance intensity were not only stronger at the beginning of their race season, but even li- even like halfway into their race season, they were stronger. Um, and I think, that, so there's not a lot of research on that. That's just one study. But I would say that that my my thinking around this has been uh, you should probably do maintenance intensity throughout the off season and throughout the base season. And I'll usually do 
a VO2 max session once every two to three weeks uh, all year long. Like even, even after I take my two week break and I'm extremely out of shape, uh, I will do a VO2 max session. It'll feel horrible because I'm so unfit, but I'll do a VO2 max session, like probably in the first week or two that I get back on the bike. Uh, and when I, when I do this maintenance intensity, it's not, I'm not going until I puke or like yeah. going until I'm like dead on the side of the road. It's actually more akin to the kind of workout that I would do during a race week, meaning sure. that I'm going to 60 to 80% instead of a hundred percent. That doesn't mean that the efforts aren't hard. The efforts themselves are hard, but I might only do, you know, three VO two max intervals instead of five. Right. Right. You know? And, and, you know, the point of these workouts is not necessarily to like, uh, you know, develop that energy system. It's, it's just what the name suggests. It's just maintenance. So, yeah. And, and I'm on the same page with you on that. Um, most of my athletes, you know, it, what, you know, like a lot of what I'll do with, with an athlete is, you know, if we're doing base season, like tempo block. Um, you know, early threshold, what, a, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is just throw in something like a over under session where we're kind of like dipping up, hitting, you know, hitting that VO two max energy system for a little bit and then dropping back down, you know, to, to tempo or threshold, um, you know, something like that. Um, but I would say my, my approach on this has changed a little bit and mostly just from doing some, some of this with my own training. Um, where instead of doing those style workouts where we're doing over unders to, to, you know, kind of brush on a little bit of the higher intensity energy system. Um, I think I'm actually more on the camp of like what you're talking about, which is actually doing a, a dedicated VO two max session, but just dropping back the volume with the overall training load of that session. So if normally a, you know, standard VO two max session would be something like a four by four, uh, max effort or five by five max effort. Um, yeah, either we're dropping the duration. So we're doing like, you know, four by two max effort, or like maybe it's, you know, four or three by four, you know, we're like reducing the number of intervals, um, just to like decrease the overall training load from that session and make sure that it's not exhaustive. So, you know, a lot of times when you're kind of like really deep into a VO two max training block, you're like, towards the end of it, you're kind of starting to go to the well a little bit, you know, where you're doing like six or eight by four VO two max, where you're just like really hammering out and trying to get every little bit of, um, you know, every little bit out of yourself during that training session where like you finish that session and you're like, I couldn't go do two or three more hours of endurance if I had to. Um, that's like going, that's like exhaustive VO two max training. We're not talking about that. We're talking about like you go hammer out, three by four VO two max, and then go do another two hours of endurance. And like, you could do that because it's not exhaustive. So, um, and the reason I like, I'm switching my mindset a little bit on that is, is really just that it's like, what is the purpose of this? And a lot of the purpose is just to just, to, we're just looking for maintenance. We're not trying to look for specific adaptations, but we're, but we do want to like go to that state of VO two max, where sometimes with the over unders, you're not really getting into that state of VO two max, like you are during a you know four minute effort. So yep. that's kind of where my, my mindset has shifted a little bit, you know, and just dropping one of those in every few weeks, um, just to like, you know, make sure we're getting to that state of VO two max a little bit more frequently, um, without increasing the training load. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, okay, sweet. Well, John, hopefully that helps. Um, I think that's, I think that's about it. Sweet. All right, man. We'll see you. See ya.